Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is I work as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about elder law. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary, uh, they have a very simple goal in life. They wanna live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's on Nantucket, they wanna be right here. They don't even want, they definitely don't wanna to move to Martha's Vineyard. They don't wanna to move to the rest of America because it's a mess. They wanna stay on Nantucket. So the point of the show is to help you, if you identify with Frank and Mary, um, by letting you know the people you need to know about and the programs uh, that you need to know about to help you stay right here in Nantucket. This is a really, this show happens to be an extremely timely one. Um, fortunately, because my co-host, Allison Forsgren, who like, seems like everybody knows from uh, Nantucket, um, finds these uh, great guests, but he, re but but she, but she was able to get this wonderful uh, guest for us today, who is new to the government of the town of Nantucket, but playing a crucial role here. So, Allison, whom do we have today? I would like to introduce the new director of human services here in Nantucket. Um, we love Taylor Hilst in that job. She has moved on to other things, but I'd like to introduce Jericho Mealy, who is the brand new. Health and Services Director. Yeah, uh, I'm the new Human Services Director for the town of Nantucket. Uh, I've been on this job for, I think, a month and about three or four days, and it's been a very interesting start, I will say that. I, yeah, I bet I bet it has. So so as, as Allison was mentioning before we started the show, one of my jobs is to kind of ask people who are the guests kind of how they got here, because, you know, most people who are guests came from somewhere else. Right, and I heard that you actually came from Japan. So, so um, how how did you come to end up here in what you're doing right now? Um, so, uh, I mean, I was actually originally born here, um, so I didn't really have a whole lot of choice on where I, I showed up. Um, but no, I was born here in 1980. Um, I graduated from high school here in '98, I believe, and I've been uh, living here sometimes. Uh, I've been all around the world. Uh, I think. I did the math and I had been in Japan for about 10 of the last 20 years. Uh, most wow. recently, I was a six year stint as a um, uh, initially a public high school teacher uh, teaching English. And then I kind of branched out into doing some tourism stuff, did a bunch of public out outreach things. And then I just think I just got here right as there was a position opening up for this one. And the town thought I looked pretty good. Well, that's great. That's a that's a, that's an exciting way to be kind of um, just kind of coming in coming in at the middle of a, a hectic time, a hectic time. And thanks very much for doing this. You know, we were talking earlier. There's probably no better guest to be having right now than than you, really, to be helping helping people. Every Frank and Mary who is out there, you know, trying to figure out how to deal with the next several months. You know. Yeah, it's going to be a chaotic several months, that's for sure. But there is definitely a, a light uh, at the end of the tunnel that is not an oncoming train now. So that's a very good thing. Yes, Jericho, thank you for coming on. Um, as you may or may not know, um, our show talks to people um, in the senior citizen arena and their families. And there are a lot of questions about who gets what, when, and where, and how, and I don't know if there's something that you'd like to start off with um, beforehand, or if you know if we should just start asking you questions. What is your preference? Uh, well, I've got a, a, a couple of things I'd like to share, at least initially, about how uh, the vaccine situation is evolving, um, specifically with respect to uh, the elderly. Um, so the federal government and then the state government which is following along their general guidelines has set up a vaccination regime i guess is what you put it as um it starts a, the phase one phase two phase three kind of thing um, phase one is what we're in right now um, it started as soon as the vaccine was approved for human use um, and will probably continue until february um, phase one is dealing with the extremely short um, supplies of vaccine by prioritizing, you know, first responders, people in assisted living communities. Um, on the island, most of that vaccination is taking place in-house. So, for example, the hospital did their own vaccinations. OIH, I believe, is doing their own vaccinations. Uh, the various EMTs, police, fire, they're doing their own um, vaccinations. And then the Department of Health um, will be uh, 
getting people their people who qualify for phase one their uh, vaccinations. Um, and as that's where we are right now, that's a very limited pool, but we do have a sign up sheet for that phase one vaccination um, on the town webpage. The easiest way to find it is to just Google town of Nantucket COVID vaccine. It should be the first Google response there. Um, then the phase one goes from uh, now basically until February. Uh, vaccine supply should increase. And at, at that point, phase two is where people who have um, you know, various medical conditions that may be make COVID especially dangerous for them, uh, for people over the age of 65, uh, teachers, uh, health department workers, um, you know, DPW, uh, anyone with um, you know, diabetes, uh, COPD, any of those things, that sign up process is going to be starting in the next week or so. Uh, well, actually, so it should be the next couple of days, actually, and will continue from February through to end of March, most likely. Um, and then phase three is going to be the general, everybody gets a vaccination. So probably for your viewers, phase two is the most significant stage. Um, and that's when they're going to be uh, contacted. Well, they're going to be filling out a, a form online um, or a variety of other sort of gap spots that we've set up to handle people who do not have access to the internet. And then once we collate that information, we're going to prioritize based on a couple of um, criteria so that we get the uh, vaccines to people who need them the most, the quickest. And um, once they sign up, um, we'll prioritize the names, we'll reach out to people, um, we'll schedule the various, um, depending on the number of vaccines we get, it might be a clinic, it might be a by appointment process. And then once that's completed, probably towards the end of, uh, probably end of March, early April, assuming supply chains stay nice and, and straight, um, that will continue on until most likely the um, April-ish, according to the timeline. Um, and then when that happens, um, that should have pretty much everyone over the age of 65 qualifies for phase two. So that's when the majority of your viewers are gonna be getting their vaccines as part of the phase two process. And then phase three, because it's a little out there in terms of time, I don't have any concrete details on that. So um, so if so, sh if you aren't um, an essential worker, you shouldn't fill out the form that's available right now on the town website. So. I'm going to start sharing my screen here so that we get a um, good look at the actual graphic that the state has produced for us. And if you look here, we've got phase one, phase two, phase three. Um, we're currently in phase one. So uh, for example, OIH, which uh, just got vaccinated, their long-term care facilities, rest homes, assisted living facilities. Um, so phase one, clinical, non-clinical healthcare workers, that's the hospital more or less. Long-term care facilities, OIH, um, I think Sherburn Common Assisted Living also falls under there. First responders, EMT, police, fire, congregate care settings, uh, home-based healthcare workers, and healthcare workers doing non-COVID um, facing care. So that's basically where we are right now. It's a small pool. It's primarily administered by the organizations that those people work for. Um, and then we'll be covering the people who don't fall into those other groups. But right now that applies to a very specific subgroup of people. So if you're waiting to get into the line for this, then um, this is probably not your line. Um, in the next day or two, we'll be opening up a sign-up sheet on that webpage that I, I mentioned earlier, and I'm sure I'll, I'll give you guys to, to share as well, um, the, this phase two section here. So these are the priority rankings for uh, phase two. So individuals with two plus comorbidities, essentially two or more medical conditions that make them more likely to die from COVID, um, or those above 75 in age, will be taking their names and their uh, contact information and a couple of other um, points of information that'll allow us to prioritize inside of phase two. Then early education, K to 12, basically infrastructure workers, people whose, if they got COVID and they were sick, it would impact government functions or can impact uh, education, et cetera. Then everyone over 65, and I'm, I'm gonna assume this is a significant number of your viewers here, and then individuals with one comorbidity. So people with one factor that predisposes them to have a severe reaction from COVID. So in the next couple of days, you guys are going to have a sign-up sheet um, available to the public. And that uh, sign-up sheet is going to take your information. We're going to put it all into a big database, prioritize it. And then when we get vaccine in, we'll be reaching out to the people who in the order of need um, and then setting up 
either clinics or by appointment vaccinations. And so, um, and so, um, so I've got a question. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in phase one, you probably don't need to be in touch with anybody. For instance, if you if you live at the homestead, which you know, someone will have reached out to you and have already been to your your residence to um, to, to vaccinate you. So, are mm -hmm. those places um, places registered with the state as you know? No one is being missed that are in that group that you know of, right? No, um, and we have the sign up sheet. If you believe that you're in phase one, that is if you're in one of those occupational classes that qualifies you for phase one, then you can absolutely go to the town webpage, the one that I gave you the, the Google term okay. for earlier, and you can sign up to make sure that we don't miss anybody. But anyone in an organized um, assisted living center or something like that, this, this has been sorted out for them. Um, staff and residents um, will be will be you know, taken care of by that organization. And then anyone who, who is in that gap is encouraged to sign up on the town webpage. Great. And so, uh, and so home health aides would be in the second phase? Most likely home health aides are going to fall into that second phase. Um, the, there are guidelines on the form that you fill out. Um, if you fit into one of those categories, or if you're wondering if you fit into one of those categories, you should definitely take a peek at that webpage and see if you qualify as one of the categories that will receive the phase one doses. And, and so, like, if you if you work and are and are working with the with the frail elder who's not in the congregate setting, you, you can just apply and and perhaps get the vaccine. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, most most likely. Um, if it's a professional capacity that that falls into one of those categories from the phase one, then yes. Um, and it, when in doubt, you know, sign up and then we'll sort you out if necessary. Again, only if you qualify for phase one or you, you strongly think that you qualify for phase one. Okay, um, great. It, 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 mostly though, phase one is is the, phase one is a, is a intentionally small category because um, both of the, demand issues that the, the supply is much smaller than demand and also um, as part of the slow rollout process for uh, the vaccine uh, they want to give it some time to see if there's anything unforeseen that happens so they give it to a small number of people initially and then they'll gradually widen the pool so you know once they have a better understanding of, of the vaccine's operation um, one thing that complicates this is that we don't have a schedule of when vaccine is made available to the town until relatively shortly before it arrives. Uh, basically, the federal government is taking um, taking delivery of the um, the vaccine from the manufacturer. They are then giving it to the state. The state is then distributing it based on a combination of population and regional breakdown. And so when we get a, we get a shipment, we get a notice of it, and then depending on how many doses we have, that's how many people we will be able to contact to set up vaccination for. Um, that number should be increasing pretty, pretty rapidly in the next few weeks, specifically um, end of January, beginning of February, um, as phase two begins, that's when we should be getting um, a much, much larger batches of vaccine and be doing larger um, vaccination processes than the very relatively small ones we're doing now. May I, may I ask a, a question? For, first, I think I think this is terrific. I think you know one of the one of the questions that this really answers is, you know, it, are, is everybody going to be kind of like crowding around trying to get an appointment? And what you're saying is. You're going to you really just want to get everybody signed up so that you want to know your entire kind of data pool in each one of these categories and then you can figure it out you know and then you're going to reach out to people so so once people have have signed up within that data pool they kind of don't have to worry anymore is they just have to wait for the call or for the call or for the email or whatever uh in order for them to know kind of and, and you're going to tell them here's where you go Right, so you don't have to figure out: is it a pharmacy? Is it the hospital? Is it a something? You're going to do that all for them, and that's exactly. and that's that's terrific. Now, I guess yeah. I have, I, had, I have a couple of questions though. But the, um, so really, with within so the, my Frank and Marys, when I think of Frank and Mary, they're typically over 65, right? 
So re really, they include two chunks of this phase two population, the over 75s who are at the beginning of the phase two. And then when they're done, then the school teachers and a bunch of other people get it. And then the, 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 the 65 to 75s then get it, right? So, yes. so, so this initial sign up that you're doing is this, would this be for only those folks who are 75 and old, older? even though they're part of phase two because they're in that initial you know, tranche of phase two, or would they be for everybody who is 65 or older? And then when you get their information, you put them into the right category. So the phase that we're taking signups for immediately, as if in, you went to the website right at this very moment and you signed up, that's gonna be phase one. That does, that's, that's only assisted living facilities and first responders. The phase two sign-up sheet that should be up in the next couple of days, that is going to be everyone who qualifies, whether you're at the very top of phase one's list or phase two's list, apologies, and the very bottom. We're going to get all of those names and all of those candidates into a large pool, and then we have several different sorting algorithms that we're going to run through those names, and then we'll reach out to the people based on, so if we get, you know, the, the first phase two shipment arrives, we have 100 doses, the first 100 people on that list will be contacted. Um, we've got, we actually, the town had a, a very elaborate um, uh, vaccination plan that was, that was actually written up during the Obama years um, under the auspices of the Department of Ho uh, Homeland Security. Um, and we, so we have this, this massive several hundred page plan on how to organize, how to run all these out, all of the various metrics on how many people are gonna go through, where we're gonna do it. And we're adapting that to COVID right now. So once we have the numbers and once we have the vaccine supply and once we have the names, we can just go right ahead on this vaccination plan. Um, there are provisions for the people who have mobility issues, transportation is handled. Um, we're looking at a couple of different sites on the island if we're going to do mass scale vaccinations initially. Um, you know, we have the capacity to scale it up. So if we got a huge batch of doses, we could handle that. We can both store them. We can administer them. We have sufficient manpower to do the vaccinations themselves, to run site security and that sort of thing. So for the most part, we, we, we are just waiting on the supply. Once we have the supply, we can scale up as necessary to vaccinate as many people as we need to. That's, that's really exciting. I just I have just one follow up question, though, and that it kind of relates directly to my 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 friends, my friends, Frank and Mary, who only have the, the, the many of whom have only the vaguest of notions of how to get onto their own laptop, you know, if they've got a laptop. And so the question is, I because I was I'm, I assume that there, a piece of this must be some kind of outreach to those to those senior populations who really aren't connected. Um, to so so, how do you how do you deal with them? How do you deal with the kind of the homebound, the folks who kind of aren't connected to this stuff? Although in Nantucket, because it's such a tightly knit community, I'm just always amazed by how tightly knit this place is. Um, there I, there aren't going to be that many, I don't think, because everybody seems to know everybody. But but that said, you know, how, how do you deal? How are you dealing with those folks so who will the, tend to be older and shut in and non tech savvy? So the the first um, step in dealing with people who who can't uh, do the conventional connection method um, is that we have very tight relationships with existing senior services and senior programs. For example, the salt marsh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're using their communications channels. We're using a lot of word of mouth. Um, the salt marsh will be involved in the administrative side of the vaccination program to a degree. Um, and they're you know, reaching out and depending upon the numbers of people who are having trouble um, accessing the web sign up, we have uh, plans in place to do basically to collect information on printed out forms and then have them processed um, you know, and entered into the data, the database so that we can, we can analyze it. Um, so, so we are, please go ahead. So, um, so I've, I've heard that people are trying to sign up at the doctor's office. Um, who, who is the one who certifies the, comor the comorbidities um, or can, you know, how do you get that arranged um, to the satisfaction of the people giving the vaccines? Well, so obviously we want to get as many people vaccinated in as short a period of time as possible. So on the, on the form, we're using a self-certification program. So you um, certify that you have X and Y. 
Uh, and there's been some state uh, and well, multiple states, in fact, have actually added um, sort of executive orders to um, make sure that the vaccine is going to the, along the priorities that, that you are. So essentially, when you sign up on this form, you're, you're certifying that under penalty of law, you, you have X, Y, and Z. Um, but you know, the, the more vaccine we get out, the quicker, the better it is in terms of the epidemiology of the situation. So, you know, we're not going to be, you know, checking Calling the doctors and saying, oh, does yeah. this person have, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the date of birth thing is one of the major uh, qualifiers for the earlier stages of the process. I mean, honestly, a significant portion of the island qualifies for phase two. So we're going to um, err on the side of inclusivity as opposed to exclusivity. Uh, that said, there, there are criminal and civil penalties for lying on these forms. So, you know, don't, please. <laughs> Even though you're 64 and you really wish you were 65 right now, you know, for the first, for the very first time, you actually wish you were older. You know, it's, it's an amazing yeah, thing. Uh, <laughs> and so, so once you're vaccinated, um, can you still pass the disease along asymptomatically? I mean, so, I mean, how, you know, when do you think the salt marsh is gonna reopen? So um, I am, I am unwilling I know to that's give, a, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm unwilling to give any, any kind of timeline on that. Um, from what I've seen in terms of various studies on this, uh, we need to have about 80% of the population vaccinated uh, to, to kind of get that sort of level of immunity that, that we, we need to prevent transmission. Um, and because the vaccine is so new and because of the uncertainty surrounding the vaccine um, in terms of like the length of, of trials, we, we actually are not sure right now if the vaccine prevents you from being a carrier. So when you get your vaccine, it's not party time. Um, the, the vaccine is, um, when enough people are vaccinated, then, then it's party time. Then we can go into the salt marsh, et cetera, et cetera. But that timeline is looking to be you know, end of phase three. And if you remember the graphic, that's looking at like end of spring, beginning of summer at the earliest. 380% uh, you know, of 300 million people must be vaccinated before <laughs> it's, it's over. So it, it light is at the end of the tunnel, but there's still a ways to go before we're there. Um, and one of the reasons they're doing these, these phases is to have time to do the research to know exactly what is going to happen when the vaccine and the, um, the, the COVID start to interact. Um, as a result of the early vaccination processes, there are trials underway to determine if you're still contagious. Um, and, you know, that kind of... Um, there's no, there's no alternative but to just take time and do the science on that one. Um, we do know that the vaccine is, is 99 to 98% effective at reducing severe severity of symptoms in the people that have it. Um, we know that it's a, a very new, very modern um, application of a, of a research project that doesn't use the virus in the vaccine. Uh, traditional vaccines are, you know, they in one way or another, you neuter uh, a virus, and then you expose the body to that neutered virus to provoke your body into learning the uh, proper immune response to that virus. This is not that type of, of vaccine. Uh, this is a, a completely, um, uh, it's, it's a, the, the result of about a decade worth of research in other vaccines for H1N1 for, for a variety of other different diseases, but this particular method is new. So while we know that it's very effective, we know that there's zero risk of giving someone um, COVID from the vaccine as, as much earlier um, vaccination programs had a, had a minor risk of that. This one, there's no chance of that, but we don't quite know how it interacts with contagiousness. Um, your body immediately knows how to respond to a COVID um, COVID infection once you're vaccinated, but um, whether or not there's enough replicating particles in your in, in your body to be infectious is something that is still being uh, determined. So you're still going to need a mask, uh, much like the mask. The mask is not there to protect you. Um, the mask is there to protect other people. 
uh, once you're vaccinated, you will be protected, but you could still potentially be dangerous to other people, which is why they did the, the prioritization process they did. Uh, and so another um, question about, um, so once you get the first dose and then the second dose of the vaccine, are you going to get like a sticker on your license, you know, or how, how will you be then identified as somebody who has been vaccinated and will that affect your ability to travel, you know, in state, out of state, you know, how does that deal with the travel restrictions? I, I have heard nothing about, um, your vaccination status impacting um, any of the COVID related um, travel measures or, or so on and so forth. Again, because you might be contagious, um, the, the, the data is still out on that one. If you went and traveled somewhere and you picked up COVID, even if you're vaccinated, you're not gonna be ill, but you could still be a carrier. Right. So I would not expect um, the travel restrictions or any of those things to be lowered um, purely because of vaccination rates until we hit that magical approximately 80% number. Um, and so, so, so if you're planning to be in another state, if you, for instance, travel to Florida for, you know, the winter or for several months, um, and you're a resident of Nantucket and you don't get your vaccination before you leave, what is your course of, of action when you arrive where you're going? So, because the vaccine is being administered on a state-by-state -state level, the, the planning portion of the uh, vaccination process, who's covered, how it's administered, the inventory tracking, determining whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, that varies from state to state. So I, in a hypothetical other state example, I can tell you absolutely nothing about uh, what would happen in another state, you might have a completely separate sign-up system. Um, you know, you 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 also you need those two doses within 20 or so days. If you get one somewhere, you absolutely cannot get the other one somewhere else. Like the the, you know, the the best bet is to not travel, is to not travel really until travel restrictions are reduced. Then the second best bet is to not travel until you're vaccinated. And then the third bet, which is not best, it's bad, is to kind of wing it on that front. Um, it is a major public health issue that I think um, people need to be mindful of and, you know, mobilizing this quickly to do as massive an undertaking of, uh, as vaccinating an entire country in short order, it's very chaotic. It's constantly evolving. Every day we're getting new guidance and new updates and our job is to try and give you as clear and precise a picture of the current situation is. But I do not, for example, have access to any of the guidance that they have in, um, you know, uh, I, don't have, I, I don't have any of the guidance that Florida is giving to their public health uh, departments, for example. Um, and we do not, you know, everyone in, the, in public health is dealing with this, is dealing with the problems in front of them. And we do have some forward thinking people who are, who are working on that, but it's best to stay in your state until vaccination is, is heavily underway. Jericho, my, one of my, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, one of my jobs is to be the kind of informal timekeeper. And I'm looking at this, and of course, these are fascinating and really important things. Um, but I, but I think we're running close on time. So I think, we, but I, but I have a strange feeling that we're going to be, you know, I'm going to be relying on my co-host to invite you back. Um, and you know, to the extent when, when you're thinking about it, or and when you're as you're working with any of the officials, to the extent that you think that this show can be useful in terms of helping to you know, transmit this message to as many people as possible, especially those who aren't necessarily that tech savvy, but know how to use the clicker on their TV. You know, you know, we, obviously, you know, we, 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 we'll do anything, we, anything you, you want us to do, right? Oh, I, is, would, uh, I, I mean, the, one of the things, one of the really big struggles right now is making sure that we keep people, keep people appraised on the current state of the vaccination system. And I will be absolutely helpful, like very happy to do, you know, semi-regular updates where I can find a way to keep this information in front of people. The town's going to be deploying, deploying a variety of different methods. We're going to have a COVID hotline, or a vaccine hotline that you can right. call in to get like the, the vaccine report for that period of time. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. It's, and, we, and, and, and is there a number that people could call if they're watching this show, you know, and they're not necessarily, they can't click in, onto someplace. 
Is there a number that they can call to just talk about this and to talk about how they're going to sign up or whatever? We, unfortunately, the health department is, is five people. So the volume of, the volume of calls will very quickly, um, uh, you know, exceed our ability to handle it. Um, the current the hotline number that we're setting up now, we're, we're literally just waiting for the security vendor to get it um, properly authorized and secure. And then we're going to be sharing that, you know, for example, probably if, if it's ready in time, we're going to share it tonight on the select board meeting. I'm going to have town social media send it out. It's going to be going in the Salt Marsh newsletter everywhere. I can I can get that number in front of people. And when I when slash if you guys want me back again, I would be very happy to share it on that that front. Well, Arthur, right. um, Arthur, I think I've got an in with getting Jericho back on the show because we've gone through the whole show without mentioning that he's my son. Oh, oh, I thought you were trying to hide this from the no, rest I of the, I wasn't going to try to bring it up, you know. I just didn't want to embarrass him at the beginning of the show. Not, not that show. Not embarrassment, but. No, definitely not. I know, but um, I'm really but. proud of, I'm really proud of um, how he stepped in and really handled the situation. Um, well, let's, let's give it a, a few more months before we call it handling the show. <laughs> well, handling, let's just say. Okay, I'll think. Say it that way. Progressive. Yeah, because but I think but but Jericho, I think certainly your your experience as a teacher, your your ability to communicate is wonderful. And so we really I think we've really appreciated this kind of concise, you know, for people who are just nervous about this and get overwhelmed by the information. I think this has just been provided some really, really helpful information. So we we will I am guarantee I guarantee we'll be seeing more of you, you know, if as long as we can keep you in in in, in, in good uh, relations with uh, my co-host. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. Allison, this was great of you to be able to lure him to come on. I know that he's buried in his day job right now, but I think this is really helping a lot of really, really vulnerable people. Yeah, Jericho, thank you very much. Um, it's been my pleasure. This is, this is literally my job. And I, I, if, if I can make people feel a little bit more secure and, and understand the situation better, then I am very happy on that front. And, as, and speaking as a 70 year old, I really appreciate the information. So thank you very much, Jericho, for coming on. Allison, thanks a million for doing this, right? And well, thanks to the folks at NCTV for, you know, being able to, to work with us and, and D. And folks, we hope you enjoy this information, you, that you've benefited from this information. We will do everything we can to keep you in touch with us. This. this is going to be an important several months. We're almost out of this. We're almost out of this. Just stay safe. As Jericho was saying, just stay safe. Uh, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you.